Dicalcium phosphate is one of the most important mixes or ingredients in a salt lick. It's a little bit bitter, so we gotta mix it with mixing salt and trace mineral salt. This can be a little bit more difficult to find, but if you find a really good feed store, they'll have it. There's the solid form of the mixing salt that we just put in, and here's the trace mineral salt in the solid form. Now, a lot of people will use that, and they'll just set it out, and as the rain dissolves it, it'll leach into the soil, which makes a really good mineral lick, but it's missing some of the key ingredients. So we don't have any dicalcium phosphate in this, and we don't have some of this, which will take away the bitterness. Thanks again. So the first ingredient that we're starting with is dicalcium phosphate. Now it's really important deer store or bank calcium and phosphorus in their skeletal system that will really depend on how large their antlers are the following year. So it's not necessarily for growth immediately, but it's a long-term effect. It's also really important for lactating does and fawn development. So we're going to start with the dical phosphate, we're going to put it in our bucket and it's going to be one of our key ingredients. So the next thing we're going to use is mixing salt or stock salt. Now deer can get in a sodium deficient state during the summer because of all the water that's in the vegetation they're eating. So this will get that sodium level back up, which allows them to absorb more nutrients. The last ingredient in our mineral site is going to be trace mineral salt. And just like the name implies, it's salt with trace minerals. It has manganese, copper, zinc, and iron, all important ingredients to sustain a healthy digestive system for whitetail. That storm the last few days has really got the ground muddy. And obviously a little bit of high wind. Now we got a tree block in the road. We were just up here yesterday and this was clear. This particular mineral site we established about two weeks ago and you can already see the level that they're knocking this dirt down. This was up even with the bottom of this root, so they've brought the dirt level down about six inches. Now, a couple things you want to look for is a good clay soil. Now, not all regions of the country have clay, but you're trying to find that soil that's not so loose that the minerals will just leach through immediately. You want some retention time in that dirt. Now here, a, a second thing that we're looking for is this old fallen down tree. Now there's obviously some root system here, so this wood will also absorb a lot of this mineral and they'll lick around and chew on this wood. So this was a perfect site. They're hitting it really well, so we're gonna freshen it up. We're gonna put a camera on it and see if these bucks are starting to visit it as much as we think they are. Choosing a location for your mineral site is important, especially when you think about how often they're gonna visit it. Now we're using this mineral site as an inventory to find out and make a plan for this fall. We wanna see what the bucks are doing, how they're growing, how many bucks to does we have. So here, we've chosen an area right along the edge of this ridge. There's a hillside. They really like to travel these flat ridges. They're gonna find this really quick. They're traveling this every day. We're seeing a lot of browse. Perfect location. We expect to see a lot of deer at this one. As both a hunter and a biologist, not only am I trying to create a good hunting location, we're also trying to improve overall herd health. So locating these mineral licks where does and even fawns can use them will improve the health of the deer herd throughout the year. Not only will it help antler size for long-term growth, it's gonna make sure that you have plenty of does breeding to produce bucks for years to come. Make sure that you work this into the soil. Now that allows a couple of things to happen. First of all, it'll keep it from crusting over the first little bit of rain or dampness. Secondly, it allows that to leach into the soil a little quicker. So they'll start using it a little faster 
if you'll mix this up. You'll see a lot quicker results and not waste any of this mineral. Now secondly, by making your own mineral, you're gonna save a lot of money, which will allow you to put a lot more mineral licks out. This particular, I think we made uh, 150 pound of mineral lick and we've only got $50 in it. Now if you buy a commercially made mineral lick, it's gonna cost you a lot more. Not necessarily less effective or more effective, but it's gonna save you a lot of money. It's salty, you can taste the dicalcium phosphate. Deer are gonna love this. This to them is food. All that's left is go hang the trail camera, see what shows up. Morning sun is going to be stronger in it. So the last thing is to make sure our trail camera is pointed directly at our mineral site. You have to adjust it and check a few pictures, and that's what I'm doing now is making certain that it's aimed properly. We don't want to get a big deer to walk by and miss it. Unfortunately, we're getting rained on, so we're trying to hurry and download a firmware. But make sure you get your cameras out, check their placement, and good luck with your mineral sites.